Hi everyone, I'm Jesse at SuroPro.com and today I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the Godox Light app. This is the app that's used to control all of the Godox LEDs that are Bluetooth enabled. We're going to start right from downloading the app onto your smartphone and then we're going to get into all the tricks and features that this app offers. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to control any LED that you have from Godox. Let's get into it right now. We're going to start right from the beginning. We're going to install this app uh, right from the app store here. I'm on an iPhone, but this is available on Android as well. So whether you're going to the app store or the Google Play store, the app is essentially uh, the exact same. So we're just going to go in here to the app store and I've already pre-searched there for Godox. So if you search Godox, you're going to have a number of Godox apps that come up. The one that we want is the Godox Lite app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download that, but you can see I'm using version 3.18. Um, they update this uh, frequently, so your version might be different, but the functionality is going to be the same. So go ahead and download that. And we're just starting from the beginning, just there's some people that get stuck even at this point, so I just wanna make sure that you're comfortable with everything. So here we go. Uh, welcome to the Godox Lite. Uh, there's basically just a privacy and user agreement. And I'm not gonna lie guys, if you go look at that privacy policy, uh, there's some sketchy stuff from the Chinese Communist Party. So I'm not gonna create an account. And I think this is where a lot of people get stuck is they wanna create an account after this. All we have to do is agree to this uh, if you wanna use it. And it needs to use, at very minimum, your Bluetooth. Later on, I'm going to show you where it may need access to your camera uh, just for a gel feature. Um, but those are the only things that it should have. It doesn't need access to your microphone or anything like that. So if you are concerned about that, uh, it's just Bluetooth that we really need here. So I'm going to turn on my assistive touch here so you can see which button pushes that I'm doing. Um, but yeah. Basically, we're installed and ready to go through and take a look at this app. Okay, guys, so I have my assistive touch on here. You can see where I'm pointing. I might have to re-enable that a couple times throughout, but uh, that's okay. So right off the bat, you have a demo project here, and it's annoying because you can't actually delete this. It's just there. So if I click into it, you've got like basically a fake scenario where you can... Um, look at all different groups and a bunch of fake lights on there. So if you want to get familiar with um, some of that, you can. But as you see on the three dots there, I can't actually remove it. That's okay. We're going to create our own here. And you can rename this to whatever you want. Let's just call it Studio. And this is essentially just the environment that we are going to be using to add our lights into. And there's two ways that we can add lights into this. So if I click the plus down here, actually first off at the top you see up here group and fixture and we can add either of those with this plus button down here. So we don't have any of the lights turned on. I will turn them on in a second here. Um, but I just want to mention about how to create groups. It's a little bit different than if you're used to using strobes and everything. You don't have to go to the light and set a channel in a group. It's all done just digitally through the Bluetooth here. So if you wanted to add a group, we can do that and I'll show you in a couple minutes. But first off, I'm just going to go flip on a couple of our LEDs here so we can add them into the system. Okay, so let's go back to our plus here and we are going to click add fixtures and right away you can see the two lights that I have turned on. We have the brand new LDX 50R, which is a little uh, RGB panel and then we have a TL60 as well. Now a lot of people get stuck right at this point where maybe they've turned on their light and they cannot find it. So you need to go to your light and in the wireless menu you're going to see Bluetooth. Make sure that's enabled, and if that doesn't work after you turn it on and you still can't find it, go into the Bluetooth and you're going to find a reset. So that'll reset the MAC address and make that discoverable by the app. 
So I'm going to add both of those in and just select them both and then click confirm. And you're gonna wait for a second while it pairs both of those lights. And once they are paired, you're going to have full control of them. So you can see both of the lights are connected here. I'm going to go in and I can use this toggle switch. I can turn the lights on and off directly from there. So the TL60, I'm just gonna turn that one off and we'll focus on the LDX50. So if I click that, um, we're going to start in CCT mode. Now, if you don't have a full featured RGB light like this one, uh, that's no problem. You're just gonna have your power control and basically it's gonna be set to daylight here. Um, the nice thing about the app is that no matter what light you're using, it's not going to make features available uh, that you can't use. So a lot of this stuff you might not see uh, with your light, but at a very minimum, you're going to have the CCT here where we can control our power and at least see our color temperature. So for this one, you can see a number of different things here. I'll turn my pointer back on where we can just flip through different color temperatures here. So we can warm it up or cool it down just by those presets. We can use the slider to go back and forth, set it quickly. And you can see this goes all the way. Let's check our minimum here. So our minimum is 2,800, actually, sorry, this one is 2,500 and goes all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. And you can use the plus button if you wanna just move it incrementally as well. Um, the other thing you can do down here at the bottom, the INT, this is our power level. So you can use the plus and minus or just use the slider as well to make it brighter or dimmer. And with all of these, we can just click in the box and we can actually custom type in the temperature or the power level that we want. Um, I don't use that too often. The sliders work pretty well. On this one, this GM, this is a green magenta tint here. So a lot of lights won't have this, but this one does. So if you need to control the tint on there, we'll just reset it back to zero and then we are set there so that's kind of cct a lot of you will just be using that mode now if you have an rgb light we have hsi which is really cool because this allows us to select any basically any color on the rgb spectrum on this color wheel so you can see i'm just rotating around greens reds blues, whatever I want. And you can see the actual HSI number up here. So if you had an HSI number, you can just set it and you can set the saturation as well. So let's say I just want it 100% on the saturation. That'll give me my most vivid colors. And then you have some presets down here that you can click between as well. And you can just flip between those. You got to give it a second for the light to connect to it. But if you wait a second, you'll see that. Um, and again, we just have our power level down on the bottom there so we can brighten it up or dim it as well. Still talking about RGB, we have this next mode here, which is RGB. So if you have a custom RGB code that you wanna match, you can type it into all of these boxes here. I'm not gonna do that, but you can also use the slider here and control that to however you want. I prefer the HSI, it's just a lot easier to find colors and stuff, but if you were trying to match an RGB code off your website or something, then you could definitely do that. And again, control your saturation over here. So that's RGB mode. Next, we have color filter. And again, this is usually only for, well, it is only for RGB enabled lights. So we have Roscoe right here, and we also have Lee gels. And this gives you a whole huge list of different gels that are available from these two gel manufacturers. So if I wanna go into Roscoe and I know I use 
you know, a 28 gel or sorry, a 26 gel on set, I can match that. And that's just digitally representing those physical gels that are offered from these two companies. So you can set those, you can set the color balance. So on these new RGB lights, you can apply the gel essentially to a 3200 degree Kelvin light, which is a warm light, or a 5600 degree Kelvin light, which is daylight. So this is basically mimicking like a physical light. Say I'm daylight bounce there and I want to add this 003 gel to it. Um, and you can see the different effects. But I could also apply that 003 gel to a 3200 degree Kelvin light and you can see what it does to it. So just be aware what light you're applying it to. So either the warm or the daylight balanced one. And again, you can search for a gel if you want there, um, but you have the list, you can just scroll through them as well. And there's all kinds of them from both manufacturers. I don't know exactly how many, but it's in the hundreds here. So you can just flip through and take a look at that, or you can select um, number or color here, and it just changes um, the numbers based on those. Next, we have the color picker up here, and you're going to see this warning come up. Godox Lite would like to access the camera. Now, if you want to use this feature, you have to enable the camera. It doesn't have access to your photo roll, so I'm going to enable that. And what this actually does is, say I want, I'm shooting a product, and I want the light to match that product. I'll give you an example here. Look at. I'll just take a shot of my blue shoe here. So I'm going to go into that blue on the side here, click capture, and you can see it just changed the light to match that. So let's see, try again if I want to go, you know, on the white side of things. It'll capture that and match that color. So this is kind of cool. Um, you can also offset the hue. We'll just go back to the blue again here. It switches over and we can play around with that hue so we can lighten it up or darken it a little bit and then we can also offset the saturation so if we want it to be plus 10 or minus 10 you can kind of change that color and just fine tune it for that rgb light to match it so that thing's kind of cool um, again it'll give you the uh, hsi code here as well so it's the 215 and then a 72 saturation. And you can play around with this taking photos. And again, um, just be aware that it's whatever the middle part is aiming at. So that little square with the circle, that's what is giving you your actual color there. Next, if we move on to FX, this is going to give you all of your special effects. And we have a whole bunch of them. You can see we're at party here. So we can control the intensity of the light. So that's our brightness. We can control the speed of the effect just by going up and down on the speed there. So if we want to slow that down, we don't want to induce a seizure here. We'll just slow it down a bit. And we can control the saturation. So if I don't want those colors to pop quite as much, I can drop down that saturation and you can see they become much more muted. So if I go back here, we'll just go through a couple of them. This is just like an RGB cycle. And the nice thing again about the app is it's not going to show you all of the ones that won't work with your light. So because I have an RGB light, I essentially have all of the effects. If you have a daylight bounce light, you're not gonna obviously have the RGB, you probably won't have the party, but you'll have basic ones like uh, TV, which just simulates watching TV. And again, you can control the speed and the intensity of the actual light there. We can select um, different colors as well in some of the effects if you want. So we have like candle here that's going to be a bicolor light. You'll at least need that. And again, the speed. So you can go through all of those, play around with them. Uh, they're kind of cool. Here's what I was talking about, about the color here. So because we have the RGB light, we can change like the sequence of 
the actual colors here between blue, um, yellow, whatever we want. So you can just play around with those and they're kind of fun. I wanted to show you the group feature here. And if I go down and click the plus button, I can go and create a group. And I'm going to add both of these lights into the group. So select them both and then click confirm. And this is going to automatically create a group. And again, this is different from uh, strobes. If you've ever done grouping with like an 8600 or anything, you don't need to go set the actual channel in the group. This is all done through Bluetooth. So it's just completely digital. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can see group one here. Uh, we can rename that group if we want. Um, we can edit it or we can delete it right away there. But I have my two lights contained within that group. So if I want to, I can turn them both on right from that main group control now. Or I can actually go and click here and I can control both of these lights. Now, one word of caution is that you want to have matching lights. So I have two RGB lights, which is good. It would be even better if I had two of the exact same light because then I know when I adjust power, they're going to be at the same power level. But because I have an LDX50 and a TL60, those are both different wattages. They're going to be at different power levels, different outputs and everything. So I would recommend only grouping lights that are the same. Um, now, if they are the same, what I can go in and do, just to give you a demo, I click the group here and I can go in and control basically everything. So I can go into my CCT mode here and both of these lights are changing as close as possible as they can, right? So you can see here, I can only go to 65 because my TL60 is limited to 65 on the top end, whereas my other light actually will go higher but it limits it to whatever the uh, basically limit of the other light is so i can go hsi here select whatever color and you can see i have a bunch of features in here but i lose my special effects as well um, those are not going to be available when mismatch groups or mismatch lights are contained within the group so if I want to go in, turn them off, and I can actually disconnect these lights or delete the group if I want. So delete group. Are you sure? Yes. And now I can take those lights out of the group, and they're just going to be individually on there as well, and I can turn them back on and off. So there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the Godox Light app, an easy way to control all your Godox LEDs. Until next time, I'm Jesse at Stropro.com and enjoy creating.